Well, hey, crafty friends, and happy Monday. It's Heidi with DIY Dreaming, and today I have a really cool project. I'm super excited about it. We're gonna be converting one of these type. It's called a wood panel from Dollar Tree Plus that I picked up last week for $3. Uh, we're going to be converting it into a beautiful table riser and you guys this is so easy and i think this idea is going to inspire you to look around because there's a lot of other things that you could be using to create a table riser so let's start at the beginning okay three dollars dollar tree plus um, I know they don't have Dollar Tree Plus stores everywhere in the United States. I do think that it's mostly in the um, Southeast, but you can find something just like this uh, at Walmart. It might not be $3, it might be $5. Um, you can find something just like this at Hobby Lobby. Uh, so it doesn't have to be this exact one. You can even just use a piece of wood whatever size you want. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took some brown stain, I added a little bit of water to it, and I stained the back, the sides, and the bottom. Really, you only have to do what is gonna be visible, but uh, for this project, I think it's nice to do the underneath as well. And this is what a lot of people will make signs on, but we're turning ours into a table riser. Okay, so first thing I did was I just took some brown stain that I diluted with water. It's about twice as much water as brown stain. If you don't have brown stain, you can also use brown paint or you could paint this. It's totally up to you. Okay, so I did that, and this is the result. Easy, and I've let it dry. Okay, so let's put this one aside. All right, now, before we move on to the next stage, I wanna to talk to you about working with wood, whether it's super nice quality wood or Dollar Tree Plus wood or <laughs> a piece of um, a pine two by four or something. Wood is wood is wood is wood. And we're gonna be using a stencil to decorate the top of this. And wood has this tendency to grab your medium and pull it down into the pores and then spread it out. So whether it's natural you haven't done anything to it. Whether it's painted, whether it's stained, I recommend that you do one of two things. Either use a clear wax on it, which you could pick up a min wax. It could be a clear beeswax, and you can get those kind of things at any hardware store, at Walmart even. Um, or I recommend that you use a clear matte sealer spray because those dry pretty much so you can't see a thing. And this is a very good friend for anyone who works on wood projects. This is Rust-Oleum brand, two times ultra clear, matte clear, seals, protects, and revitalizes. I got this at Walmart. I really wish Walmart would pay me for the promotion of all their crafting supplies that I do, but I'm just kidding. Um, it was under $5 and one can lasts a long time. We're gonna use this same product when it's all finished to seal the whole thing in and um, make it permanent. Okay, so I gave this little wood, this part, two light coats of clear matte sealer. And what I do, where did I put it? Let's see. Hmm. Well, maybe I, oh, here it is. This is my, this is my gotta go outside and spray something cake board, Wilton cake board from Walmart. <laughs> and I just lay it out in the grass and spray my whatever it is. 
with the coat or two. You absolutely have to use this stuff outside. Um, yeah. Don't even do it in the garage. You've got to do it outside. Okay, so this is sealed. It has two coats with a clear matte sealer on it. All right, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this beautiful stencil right here, which when I'm all finished, I'll get you links. It is called a Mandela Lace Stencil. It is super versatile. I have some projects back here that I'm going to show you in just a minute, but I want to ask you, tell me in the comments, did you see the video that I did not quite two weeks ago where I showed you how you can use stencils and ink on denim? I had a Old Navy uh, jean jacket that I put this Mandela lace in white ink on the back of it. I also had an old pair of jeans, of like boyfriend style jeans, the kind that are all ripped up. And I put the Mandela lace with some white ink on the leg of a pair of jeans. Um, so <laughs> this is a super versatile stencil and you can do a ton of different things with it. <laughs> okay, I pulled this out too because I want to talk about stencils real quick. Um, these, you guys, last forever. Well, they don't last forever, but they last a super long time. I've had this one for almost two years. It's all stained and yucky looking on the front, but it still works. Um, it also doesn't have a ton of stick left on the back of it, but when you lay it down on something and press it down, it still works. And I bet you I have used this thing at least 50 times, at least. And um, the reason why it's stained blue and orange is because ink has a tendency to stain the front of your stencils, which does not affect their usability. It just makes them look well loved and well used. And um, so that's why it's kind of ugly looking, but it still works just fine. Um, this is the one that we're gonna use today and I have used it three or four times. I wanna show you another example of stencils that I love. Here's another one of my absolute favorites. Super versatile. You can use this thing all year long. In fact, I'm looking across the room right now. Let me just grab it at this beautiful old window. that I stenciled with chalk paste and that Victorian pattern stencil. Uh, and then I've done a hundred other things with it, but this is the one that I've had for a, almost two years. It's stained and yucky, but it still works. And I finally just bit the bullet and got a brand new one. It hasn't been used at all. So this is what they look like before you love and use them. And this is what they look like after. They're just such a great investment in your crafting closet. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you about stencils because I do get questions all the time from people saying, it's stained, I've ruined it. And I'm like, no, you haven't ruined it. You've just proved that you love it by using it. And chalk pastes don't seem to stain as bad. Um, also, lighter color inks and chalk paste don't seem to stain as bad. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be using. And I have used this stencil probably 10 times. Um, so I'm not gonna fuzz it, but normally I would fuzz it real quick, which means you just are taking a little bit of the super stickiness off of the stencil by putting it on a, what is this called, a fuzzing towel, a tacky towel is what this is called, or you can put it on a pair of jeans or a t-shirt and that helps. But we're not gonna do that because we don't need to. Okay, I'm just trying to decide where I wanna do it. I am not going to do this completely uh, symmetrical. And we're gonna see if we can do the sides as well. So you'll take your stencil off the backing. If it's brand new, then fuzz it. If not, then you don't have to. And I just kind of wanna decide where I want it. I'm gonna press it down. And then 
we're gonna use some white chalk paste, super versatile. And we're gonna use a couple of little squeegees to apply it. And um, when it is all dry, I will take it back outside on my Wilton cake board and give it two more light coats of this clear matte sealer and then it'll be permanent. Now, what does permanent mean? It means that it's not gonna come off. It doesn't mean that you can put this wood in a sink of water or that you should put wet food on top of it. Whenever you're using wet food, I suggest you use some little glass plates or like salami or something. If you were using this as a charcuterie board, um, put the wet foods like cheeses, olives, you know, salami, meats, that kind of thing. Put them in some type of a dish. Okay, so I want to also stencil the edge of this. I think it's gonna be very cool. So I'm gonna just pull this down nice and tight on this first side. And I'm just gonna take a little blob of my chalk paste, little. And we're gonna talk about feet and legs in just a second. Um, let me get this excess off the bottom. Okay, so I have just stenciled that side. Let's pull this up. And let me do the same thing for this side. Um, so I'm gonna show you some ideas for feet and legs also that are super affordable. I'll show you one idea that's not super affordable, but it's so cute. Um, anyways, so I love turning something like a $3 Dollar Tree Plus wood panel into something fabulous. That's totally my thing. Okay, so here are the sides. And I'm not gonna fiddle with that too much right now. I'm just gonna lay this down and we're gonna do the top now. And if you find that your chalk pastes are getting a little dry because they, do, they are made of chalk, which is a hard, solid, dry substance, you can give them a little spritz of a, um, distilled water and stir it up good. And that seems to help. Don't put regular water in it unless you're willing to grow a science experiment. And I don't want science experiments. <laughs> I had enough of those when my kids were young and in school. Um, so I don't want any more of those. Okay, I'm just very quickly pushing my chalk paste through the holes while we're letting this start to dry. I'm gonna show you the stuff that's behind me, so stay with me. And I'll also put in the comments pictures of that jean jacket and the jeans that I was just telling you about. I should have brought those down from my closet. I just didn't remember before I turned my phone on to start this video. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pull up the big globs and I'm putting all of this goodness back in my little pot and I'm gonna put the lid back on it. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Okay, let's see. Hopefully, it will look fabulous. Oh, it does. Oh my gosh, it really does. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in my little tub of water over here, just so that it can start to soak the chalk paste off until I can get out into the kitchen to spray it. Okay, and you can see that in some areas it's darker than others. And there's a couple spots that I need to clean up, so let me do that right now. Antibacterial wipe. Um, okay, I think 
I saw some. So you got a little bit of chalk paste underneath this. And I'm just going to wipe that off. Easy. Okay, so let's set this aside. I'm just gonna pop it right here for a minute. And um, let me show you some of these projects that I have behind me. Did, you, did I say any of my normal stuff? Um, Brenda says this gives her an idea for an old board that she found at a yard sale last year. Yes, exactly. And you can stain or paint it. Um, and then of course the design and the colors of that are totally up to you. Okay, this is not a tray, but this is a sign I made at least a year ago. And I stained it with some diluted brown stain. I stenciled it with this word family. And then this is just one of those Dollar Tree crosses, you guys. And I did the Mandela lace on it. And then I used a little bit of the same white chalk paste and kind of pushed it into the grooves. Isn't that pretty and different? Um, what I love about stencils like the Mandela Lace are that it isn't specific to any one season, so you can use it all year long, and you can use it on a million different things. Okay, this is a tray that I made almost two years ago. Probably when my um, Mandela lace, that really crummy one, that, that stencil that's blue and orange, all stained and yucky, probably when it was new. Um, this is an 18, I believe it's an 18 inch round that I purchased at Home Depot. It was around $8. You get these in the wood section at Home Depot. Um, and they're meant to become Lazy Susans um, and they're with like the long boards and everything. Uh, you can get different sizes, but this is the size I bought and I think it was around $8 and it's really pretty nice. So what I did is I stained it and then I purchased some of these super inexpensive, I mean, I'm not even kidding. They were around $1.30 a piece, also at Home Depot in the drawer pull section. Two of these handles and then I used, my little felt things are falling off. I used these little bun feet that I stained. I'll show you those in just a second. And I stenciled the front of it with that Mandela lace stencil. And then I sprayed it, two coats. And look how beautiful that is. So this project cost me $8 for the board, $1.30-ish for each handle. So it's like under $11 and it is stunning. A lot of the times I'll have this sitting out in my kitchen in a book stand, or I'll have it sitting on this cabinet with a white pitcher of flowers and some little doodads on it. And it's, it's beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so that was one thing I wanted to show you. And then this is not the Mandela lace stencil. But this is an, another idea. This is one of those boards that have the, I don't know what this is called, edging. I probably purchased this at Hobby Lobby. Whoops, it's upside down. Can you see what I'm talking about? And it was probably five or six dollars. And I painted and then I did a dry brush technique over the top of it with some stain. Um, and this is just that color that I love so much, that Waverly chalk paste. Uh, well, it's not chalk paste. I'm sorry. It's Waverly acrylic paint from Walmart. The color that I love is called plaster. So I painted it and then I used the same brown stain diluted with a paper towel to do like a dry brush thing over the top of it. And then I stenciled it with this beautiful stencil, also from magnoliadiy.com. It says, be confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1, 6. 
So when I made this, it was a Facebook Live that you could probably look up here if you would like. And I made two of them. And I gave one of them to the assistant teaching director of my community Bible study, and she loved it. Um, it's been sprayed, so it's permanent. And it's just a beautiful piece to have sitting out. So that's one idea. It has the kind of legs that we're gonna be using today. These are just these little round legs that have one flat side, and I'll show you those in just a second. I painted them the same plaster color, and then I'm gonna show you how to attach them because if you just use hot glue, the first time it gets bumped, um, the leg will pop off. So I'll show you that in just a second. And then I have one other thing to show you. This was a Facebook Live um, from a couple months ago or a month and a half ago where I showed you guys how to do this Mackenzie Childs looking. They have multiple patterns. So this is just one of their patterns. Looking tray. So this is the same deal. It's one of those wood rounds that was painted that creamy color. And then I did this effect on it. And you guys look at these legs. <laughs> Are they the cutest thing? Okay, ignore the polka dots and the stripes and the gold and all that, but look at the shape of those legs. Are those adorable or what? Okay, these legs came from Hobby Lobby. They're the most expensive legs <laughs> I personally will purchase. They're around 250 each, which means I have $10 in legs on this tray. They come just uh, unfinished wood. Look, I'll show you in just a second. Um, they're meant to be curtain finials. So keep that as an option for something that you could do if you wanted. But I saved them for something pretty special. And if you wanna see the video tutorial for this, just click on the videos tab here at DIY Dreaming or hop over to my YouTube page and you'll be able to see it there. I think we have it uploaded to YouTube. I hope we do. We may not have it on YouTube, but it's on my Facebook page. And um, so that's another leg option. Okay, so let's talk about legs and then we'll work on our piece right here. Um, so those adorable legs that have the little curve and go to the bottom, those are from Hobby Lobby. A lot of the other legs that I used, like these little, I call them bun feet. I don't know what they're really ca called. They look like this. And I don't know if they're meant to be a wheel on a wooden car or what they're meant to be, but they make a great little bun foot. Those come from Hobby Lobby um, in their wood pile section. And it does say toy wheels. You get a whole bunch in a package. Um, and those have been stained, so you can stain or paint them, so that's one option. Another option are these right here. These are called ball knob holes. These are slightly smaller than the ones that we're going to be using, but these are from Hobby Lobby 2. And they're like round, and then notice they have this flat piece that make them easy to attach to something. My only complaint, about this is that they they give you an odd number so why give me nine because you know i'm gonna need four either give me eight or give me 12 in each package but these are hobby lobby as well um here are some other little bun feet that look like the little wheels i got these i don't even remember where but they were on sale i'm always looking for legs and feet I'm always looking for a lot of things, but I'm always looking for that. Okay, and then here's another idea for legs. These are not in the right container, but these are like little candle holders. And these make a great leg as well. And they come in a variety of different sizes. 
And you can find some of these things at Hobby Lobby. I know you can find them at Michael's, at Joann's, um, and just, just be on the alert for that kind of stuff. And I'm always waiting till there's gonna be a good set. And then the one other idea I wanna share with you for legs are these. These are four inch early American table legs. I think these came from either Home Depot or Lowe's and I've had them for a very long time and they were expensive. They were like three or four dollars a piece. And you would have to do a drill a hole in whatever you were going to put them on. But that's an option too. So just, just be looking to see what could work to create a table riser. Okay, one other idea I want to share with you, but we're not going to do this on this project, is I know you guys have seen these. They're those half round wood beads. They don't have a hole in them but they look like this. These look great as edging. Um, and in case you didn't know it, you can stain them. I was toying with that idea, so I just threw a whole bunch of them in a cup that had some diluted stain in it, stirred it up, pulled them out on some paper towels and let them dry. So you can do, you can do that idea as well. If you want to embellish your, what you're making even more. But we're gonna keep it simple because our focus is this gorgeous design. Okay, so, let's see. I'm gonna lay out my tacky towel and I'm pretty sure this is dry. And I'm just gonna put my little wood panel right here Okay, so what we're gonna be using are these. They're slightly bigger than those half rounds that I showed you just a minute ago, and I did the same thing. I threw them in my little cup of stain, stirred it with the plastic spoon, pulled them out on some paper towels, and then I wiped off the excess. What size are the half round beads? Let me see if it says. These you can get on Amazon more affordably than to buy these in a craft store. This says that the, and I can get a picture of this and put it in the comments. 200 pieces, 20 mm split balls for DIY crafts. And this is the brand. I have no idea how much I paid for them because I've had them forever. Okay, so what I wanna tell you about attaching your feet or legs is that you do have a couple of options so if you wanted to use something like that those really cute legs on this you could attach them inside here they wouldn't have this screw but just so you can visualize that I want you to see that so they could be glued on inside if they're tall enough I'm gonna put my wood balls on the corners right here, not here. Does that make sense? Because these are not super tall. And I have, before I knew better, um, I have tried to just use hot glue and I've been disappointed when I would hit my riser uh, or just barely bump it and it would pop, the leg would pop off. So I think the best thing to do is a combination of a little hot glue, little. That just gives you your, um, your immediate stick factor. And then I'm using some E, whoops, E6000 glue. Let me see if I have some more over here because I think that one's almost out. Ooh, I do. Oh, here it is. Next time I'm out, I need to buy some more E6000. I like these little tubes better, by the way. Um, so, 
Okay, so what my plan is, I'm gonna put the E6000 glue around the, let's see how big is this gonna fit. Yeah, I'm gonna put the E6000 around the outside of the flat on this. And then right before I stick it down, I will do a little blob of hot glue. because the hot glue cools quickly, and this does not. Okay, so see? And then, let's just do a quick little shot of that. And I'm setting it down and I'm pushing the edges of the ball all the way out to the edge of my wood piece. See, look how cute that's gonna be. All right, let's do the rest. And I am, in case you, if you missed the beginning where I talked about all this, or you missed the part where I showed some examples of other fun things that I've done, um, come back and watch this on replay. Uh, yeah, what was I just going to tell you? I don't know, something, something super important that I cannot think of right at this exact moment. So I think the E6000 is the most important part of it. Uh, maybe you have another super heavy duty kind of glue that you like. That's fine. Just know that just hot glue is not gonna be very um, long lasting. And you don't wanna have this set out with a beautiful vase on it and some flowers or something and bump it and have one leg fall off and the whole thing tip over. You definitely don't wanna do that. Oh, I know what I was gonna tell you. Um, I will, for sure, be taking this outside to do, this one's empty, to do um, two light coats on the top and the sides that we stenciled to make this permanent. Um, and that will make it permanent, but it's not going to make it so that you can put it in a sink of water. Um, first of all, you wouldn't do that with a piece of wood. Um, it's going to make it so that you could wipe it off with a very slightly damp paper towel. But it's not going to make it waterproof, in case you're wondering. Okay, so the other thing you can do is you can come back and add some of those little round felt things. They're not felt, what are they? These prevent whatever from scratching the table. You could add some little teeny ones to the bottom of these balls, but here it is. Isn't that Adorable. Now, if you wanted, you could have done it completely centered and cover almost all of the tray. Um, I like how mine looks kind of distressed as you get out towards the edges. I love the outside edge part. I will definitely spray that good. Um, so I wanna know what you guys think. Can you believe that this started out just as a $3 wood panel that looked like this from Dollar Tree? I mean, it'd be so cute. There's a ton of different places that you could put it. And if you didn't like this brown stain, you can always do some other kind of finish on it. So I wanna know who is inspired? 
who's gonna look around their craft area to see what they might have that they could convert into a tiered table, uh, not tiered, a table riser of some sort. Um, who is going to start looking for legs? Um, I have a whole bag of various legs that I just showed you a minute ago. I am always on the hunt for legs, and sometimes you'll find things that are not even really meant to be legs, but that you can turn into legs. So just be open about that and just be looking on the lookout for something that uh, it doesn't even necessarily have to be wood. I was thinking, let me show you this real quick, that if I wanted, I could even use something like these. These are those pretty glass drawer pulls that I found at my Dollar Tree Plus store last Wednesday for $1.25 a piece. Aren't these beautiful? So, I mean, you could use something like this too. You'd have to drill a hole and you'd have to figure out how to cut this a little bit shorter because it's kind of long, but there's just so many options out there. So, Iretta says she loves to look for things to make legs. Me too. You know what? What inspires me the most is this. I just like to find a bargain I like to find something that I can make look really nice that was super affordable. That's like a, um, it's like a treasure hunt for me all the time. And you can surprisingly find great things at thrift stores all over the place. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. If you want to go back and watch the video replay, it'll probably, you'll probably have most of your questions answered there. Rose Miller said, hey, Rose Miller, I think you were one of the people who won the napkins today. Um, anyways, she says she wants to know if you can order online. Yes, you can. Um, not from Dollar Tree Plus. Well, you can order from them, but I think they make you do big quantities. But you can order stencils. They have a ton of different designs that are super versatile chalk paste squeegees you can order all kinds of surfaces you can order misty i mean there's a ton of great crafting things that you can order from my website which is magnolia diy.com uh, but if you want a link to either one of these stencils this one or the mandela lace and this is my credit one i'm going to show you again um just say link and I'll get you a link to everything. Susan Smart says it's like a treasure hunt. I totally feel the same. Susan's asking, do I seal it after? Absolutely. I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna give it two light coats of clear matte sealer on the top as well as on the edges where we continued the design. What kind of paint could you use on canning jar lids? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. A chalk paint, an acrylic paint, something like that. Um, okay, Susie, my friend Susie Noble has a great idea. She says that you could use this as a charcuterie tray, which do you know what that is? That's where you put out, you know, a variety of meats and cheeses and, and bread and crackers and stuff as like a appetizer kind of thing. Um, if you put, if you cover your tray with saran wrap, brilliant. I didn't even think about that. Donna, I'll get you a link. Lisa, I will get you a link too. Um, Okay, Elizabeth is answering a question that we just had a minute ago about painting metal lids, and she says chalk paint is what you need. Sherilyn, I'll get you a link. Oh, Dixie, thank you for saying beautiful as usual. I so appreciate you guys. You're so encouraging. Um, so, 
be looking around for things that you could make into elevated table risers. Be looking for things that can become legs. Know that you can water down any kind of brown stain to get this kind of a finish. And that um, you could also use just brown paint that you dilute. And if you're interested in any of these stencils or anything else to get your craft closet stocked, um, I can help you with that. Mary says it's a good idea for covering it with saran wrap. I think that's brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, one last thing I want to tell you guys, because I know someone will ask, but don't, don't ever, I mean, if you want your stencils to last, to be using them when they're 20, 30, 40, 50 uses in, I mean, some of these are like almost two years old, then don't ever use any kind of paint whatsoever on top of your stencils to create your design because paint dries really fast and this is a stencil that has all these teeny little holes in it little mesh and when paint dries in that mesh paint is permanent and it's not coming out so you're clogging up your beautiful design uh, anytime you try to use paint especially on a big design that's going to take a little while. It will dry before you get the stencil off. So you want to be using either chalk paste or if you're stenciling on fabric or ceramics, you want ink. So those are the two things that I recommend. Chalk paste for everything else. Ink is for fabric and ceramics. And after it's dry, you will heat set it to make it permanent. Okie dokie. Hey Jenny, how are you doing? Paula says she uses Krylon, uh, a Krylon kind of varnish from Hobby Lobby. Yeah. So Angie says she just got a large cutting board. You could do a pretty design on that too. All right, well I feel like I've just yacked on and on and on and on, but I hope I inspired you. So. Um, as you're hopping off, do a this or a heart or say something to me in the comments and make sure that you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. And how do I store the larger stencils? I just have these really deep drawers and I just lay them on top of each other. But always on the backing sheet. Um, anyways, check to make sure you've liked and followed this page. And if you liked this idea, Feel free to sprinkle. That's probably the number one thing that you can do to help me continue to grow DIY dreaming. Alrighty. I'll see you guys later. I will get pictures. I'll put them in the comments as well as just over at DIY dreaming. Um, click on the videos tab here and scroll down and you can see lots of other ideas for legs and feet. Okay. Have a great day, you guys, and thanks for joining me.